Ellie Wiesel was born on September 30, 1928, in Sigi, Transylvania. Ellie had his mother, Sarah, his father, Eshlomo, and his three sisters, Hilda Bea being the oldest and Zipporah the youngest. Ellie's father was a very religious man and encouraged Ellie at the very young age of 12 years old to study the Kabbalah. Later, things took a turn for the worst. In May of 1944, Ellie and his family were deported to Auschwitz, forcing them to leave everything behind. During Ellie's time at Auschwitz, he lost his mother and younger sister Zipporah. Ellie's experience at Auschwitz was rough. Ellie and his father were later forced to move on foot to Buchenwald. The fact that they were walking in snow, his father was very weak and he ended up dying in January of 1945. Three months later, on April 10, 1945, at the age of 16, Ellie was liberated from Buchenwald. After his liberation, Ellie discovered that his two older sisters, Hilda and Bea, had survived the Holocaust. He then moved to France to study at the Sorbonne for his interest in journalism. After completing his studies at the Sorbonne, Ellie began to travel all over the world discovering new things as a reporter for a French newspaper. During one of many interviews, Ellie was convinced to write about his experience at the concentration camps. He later decided to move to New York to pursue his writing career. Shortly after, in 1956, Ellie was struck on the street of New York by a taxi cab, causing him to put a pause on his writing career due to his injuries. After Ellie's recovery, he decided to continue his writing and one year later published his first novel, Night, which talked about his whole experience at Auschwitz and Buchenwald. Not too long after, he published the second novel to a series called Dawn, based on his life after the concentration camp and what he did from there. After seven successful years of living in the United States, Ellie finally became a U.S. citizen, granting him the ability to travel the world. In 1964, Ellie decided to travel back to his hometown in Sagi and visit his childhood home. Ellie's writing skyrocketed in 1966 and he ended up publishing two books called The Gates of the Forest and The Jews of Silence. He then published another novel in 1968 called Legend of Our Time, speaking about his experience in the Holocaust and how God played a big role in his time there. Later in 1960, Bea and Hilda traveled to Jerusalem to attend the wedding of their brother Ellie and Marion. Yet again, in 1970, Ellie publishes with the help of his wife two books, one called A Beggar in Jerusalem and the other one one generation after. Finally, what they had both been waiting for, in 1972, Ellie and Marion have a baby boy named Elisha Eslomo. At this point in his life, Ellie has found not only his passion for writing, but also his passion for teaching. In 1976, Ellie goes to teach at the University of Boston. Later, in 1978, President Jimmy Carter appoints Ellie as the chairman of the President Commission on the Holocaust. Well, many of the Holocaust survivors and Ellie being a political activist and making sure they were recognized had been waiting for was finally accomplished in 1984. There was a symbolic, groundbreaking ceremony that was held at the soon-to-be site of the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. What Ellie was longing and of course deserved finally came. Ellie was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1986. In 1992, President Bush gladly awarded Ellie with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. The day that many people had been waiting for had finally arrived in 1993. Ellie delivered the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum dedication ceremony speech, following with the grand opening of the museum. Not only did Ellie publish the book And the Sea is Never Full in 1999, but he also published his first children's book called King Solomon and His Magic Ring. The children's book talked about the many unheard stories of King Solomon. In 2006, Ellie's career was at its highest point when he made a special appearance on the very known show, Oprah. Ellie and Oprah traveled to Auschwitz. He explained to her about the death of his parents and his life-threatening experience at the concentration camp. Ellie has, of course, had his ups and downs throughout his life, but who would have ever thought that his one-year experience at the concentration camp would have brought us all of these amazing novels, opening up to all of his readers and speaking to them about his experience and exactly what he was thinking at that point in his life. He has really made an impact so many people in the world today. At this point in life, who knows what Ellie has planned for us in the future? Maybe plays, more children's book, or even if we're lucky, more novels talking to us about his life as of today. The important thing in life is not to think about the past or worry about the future. We will get there someday, just not today. We should just be worrying about today and not what the future might bring for us. Hopefully along the way, Ellie comes up with something genius and surprises us, but for now, we might just have to wait for that day to arrive.